Yesterday was the midterm elections, which you probably know by now because Instagram was full of people showing off their I voted stickers. Like yesterday, no picture was taken that didn't include an I voted sticker. Even dick pics had the stickers in them. <laughs> I know because I received many. <laughs> and as you probably also know, the Democrats ended the night riding high. A power shift in Washington. Democrats take the House for the first time in eight years. House Minority Leader, soon to be potentially House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi, said her party's wins mark a new day in America. It's about stopping the GOP and Mitch McConnell's assaults on Medicare, Medicaid, the Affordable Care Act, and the health care of 130 million Americans living with pre existing medical conditions. Let's hear it more for pre-existing medical conditions. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Let's give it up for pre-existing conditions. <laughs> Diabetes, I see you, baby. <laughs> we got eczema in the house. Mm-hmm. Asthma makes some noise. <gasps> oh, Come on, asthma. <laughs> that was a bit weird. <laughs> That's right. After eight years of being weaker than Ben Carson's coffee, the House <laughs> Democrats finally have a semblance of power. And when the day started, I honestly thought this was gonna be today's big story, because now that the Democrats have the House, there are so many questions. You know, what is their plan for working with Trump? Will Nancy Pelosi reprise her role as Speaker? Will Bernie Sanders MC my birthday party? You know, questions <laughs> we all have about the future of the country. So we thought today's news would be focused on all of that. But then, President Trump stood up and said, no, 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 you guys might have taken control of the House, but the news cycle will always be mine. Fireworks from the East Room of the White House just a short time ago as President Trump repeatedly clashing with members of the media. On the campaign trail, you called yourself a nationalist. Some people saw that as emboldening white nationalists. Now people are also saying that I don't know why you'd that say the that. That's such a racist There's question. Some... Let me tell you, that's a racist question. I think you should let me run the country, you run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much better. If I, if I may okay, ask one enough. other question. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude... Terrible person. You shouldn't treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter. Go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts. Well, I'm not a big fan of us. yours either. Oh, damn! That escalated fast. <laughs> what happened there? Peter Alexander just tried to be that guy who steps in to stop the fight, and then ended up getting punched in the face. That's what happened, <laughs> Mr. President. You being inappropriate. Your mama's inappropriate. <laughs> ah! But look, I mean, as troubling as this was, let's be honest, Trump attacking the press, this is something we've seen a hundred times before. What we haven't seen is how the president plans to work with the new Democratic House. I really believe that we have a chance to get along very well with the Democrats. We should get along and get deals done. Now, we can investigate. They look at us, we look at them, it goes on for two years. Then at the end of two years, nothing's done. Now, what's bad for them is, being in the majority, I'm just going to blame them. You understand? I'm going to blame them. They're the majority. Honestly, it makes it much simpler for me. I, they will be blamed. You know, as shameless as that is, I somehow appreciate that Trump just told us his entire evil plot. <laughs> He's like a cliched movie bad guy. And then, even if it's not their fault, I'll blame the Democrats for everything. Mwahahaha! 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 What are you doing? He's like, why are you telling us this? Because it's what villains do. Mwahahaha! They'll never see it coming. Mwahahaha! And now, to be honest with you, there's no highlights that I can show you from this press conference that can do it justice. Because it was an hour and a half of crazy Trump at his finest. All right, he accused the media of dividing the country. He trashed Republicans who wouldn't bow down to him. And he even threatened to investigate the Democrats if they used the House to investigate Russia or his tax returns. Like, Trump was raging mad. And then, what was hilarious <laughs> is that in the middle of all this chaos, this was one of my favorite moments, <laughs> he had to take questions from a bunch of people who couldn't even speak American. So how you focus on the trade and economic issue with Japan? 
Will you ask Japan to do more, or will you change your tone? I, I don't, I really don't understand. It's the election of two Muslim women. One of them is veiled to the house, which is making history. Is this a rebuke of this message, do you think? I don't understand what you're saying. What? President Erdogan said he's not going to follow your sanctions, and he's going to keep uh, buying uh, oil from... Uh, Who said that? Uh, President Erdo Erdogan. Turkey. I know, I know. I know, I know. No, no, I know, I know. I know exactly, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you tell me first, but I know, I know, I know. What the hell's going on there? Trump can't understand anyone with an accent? That would be so weird, because he lives with Melania, okay? <laughs> that makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Unless, unless that's probably why they're still together. She's like, Donald, I want divorce. I don't understand what you're saying. I want divorce. Okay, fine, I'll get you a horse. Every day, she asks for a horse, so cute. She says she wants to file. You don't need to file for a horse, you can just get one, baby. I'll just buy you one. So now, so now, at this point in the day, we were like, all right, forget the Democrats in the House. Clearly, the big news of the day is now gonna be Trump and his fiery press conference. But then Trump stood up again and said, oh, you think I'm the story of the day? No, I'm the story of the day. <laughs> CNN breaking news. Breaking news, President Trump suddenly fires the Attorney General Jeff Sessions for the unpardonable sin of recusing himself from the Russia investigation. Jeff Sessions forced to resign today at President Trump's request. President Trump fired Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Okay, now that's not fair to President Trump, all right? He didn't fire Jeff Sessions. He just said Rumpelstiltskin and then the curse was broken. <laughs> that's how it works. And remember, this is all happening in one day. You realize this? All of this is happening in one day. And this is huge news. The president has fired his attorney general. And I know there were rumors that this might happen. I mean, in fact, people were talking about Sessions getting fired for so long, he probably already had a backup job lined up. He's like, it's okay. I'm already assistant manager at Baby Gap. <laughs> but... But I want you to know I've recused myself from folding those onesies. <laughs> And the timing, yo, man, the timing is so brazen from Trump. This is literally less than 24 hours after the midterms. He knew that this wouldn't look good before the midterms. He doesn't even wait. He just, like, pulls the trigger on this thing. Like, I feel like he could have at least made it seem like he needed to think about it first, you know? It's like when you're in a relationship and your girlfriend is like, hey, if something ever happened to me, which one of my friends would you... Karen! <laughs> I didn't... I didn't even finish what I was, what I was gonna... <laughs> what? Oh, what, what are you gonna say? I'll say, which one of my friends would you hook up with? Karen, yeah, Karen. <laughs> Have you been thinking about this? No, it just came in my head now. <laughs> yeah, Karen on the beach in Montauk. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> just, like, think about it, Trump. Fake it! And I never thought I'd say this, but I feel bad for Jeff Sessions. Because apparently Trump didn't fire him to his face or even call him, all right? He just sent John Kelly with, like, a pre-written resignation letter. Yeah, John Kelly probably got there and he was like, all right, Jeff, you want to do this the easy way or the Omarosa way? Which one is it? <laughs> and now, just, just looking at Trump and Sessions, like, this is, this is a strange story because there were so many reasons these two should have gotten along, right? They both don't like immigrants. They both do like white people. But there was always one big thing that Trump hated about Sessions. He recused himself from overseeing the Mueller investigation, which meant that he couldn't protect Trump from Mueller. And now, with Sessions gone... Trump can finally appoint a guy he knows for sure will protect his ass. And what an ass. <laughs> a guy who could kill the Mueller investigation if he wanted to. And from the looks of it, the guy Trump picked for the job would be more than happy. The chief of staff to Jeff Sessions, Matt Whitaker, will be the new acting attorney general. Whitaker told CNN last year that the new attorney general could reduce Mueller's budget, make it so small that the Mueller investigation would grind to a halt. I could see a scenario where Jeff Sessions is replaced uh, with a recess appointment, and that attorney general doesn't fire Bob Mueller, but he just reduces his budget so low that his, his investigation grinds to a, a, almost a halt. <laughs> Man, Donald Trump is so rock and roll. So he probably saw this guy on CNN talking about how he would squash the Mueller investigation, and then Trump just decided to hire him. Yeah. Dude from the TV. I want him and Barney. I'm in. <laughs> and his plan, 
This guy's plan to kill the investigation is just that he would drain all of Mueller's resources, which is the most passive, aggressive way to kill an investigation. So Mueller's gonna show up at work, and he's gonna be like, we finally cracked the Russian collusion case. Time to print out the indictments. Oh, we don't have printer ink. <laughs> yeah, we ran out. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll just fill it out online. Oh, we didn't pay for Wi-Fi this month. <laughs> You know what, it's okay, I'll just drive to Kinko's. Oh, we sold the Justice Department's car. <laughs> By the end of this, the investigation is just gonna be Muller walking down the street making siren noises with his mouth, like, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. Put your hands behind your back and imagine there's handcuffs. <laughs> now look, maybe I'm being too quick to judge, all right? I'll admit this, maybe I am. Just because Matt Whitaker over here came up with a hypothetical plan to fire Robert Muller doesn't mean that he actually thinks the Muller investigation has gone too far, all right? Except, there is the fact that he also wrote an op-ed that was literally called, Mueller's investigation of Trump has gone <laughs> too far. <laughs> Which to me is kind of a red flag. <laughs> so, my friends, let's face it. The Mueller investigation is in danger. Yeah. And something tells me that right now, Robert Mueller is in a bathroom stall trying to finish his homework before they shut it all down. <laughs> He's just like, I'm in here working! <laughs> and now you realize that all of this happened in one day and one day after the midterms. And this is what freaks me out. For the last two years, that's been Trump when he's winning. Now we're gonna see Trump when he's losing. <laughs>